from the OAO desk. And today I have Sandy Flacel with us, upcoming author of Believe. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Pashmina. How are you? I'm doing fabulous. I'm so, so grateful to be here. Oh, thank you for being here. Tell us, where are you dialing in from? I am in actually uh, British Columbia, Canada. Wow, that's amazing. So good to have you with us. So if you're ready, Sandy, we'd love our audience to get right into understanding what your book is about and how your authorship came about. So we're just going to get right into the questions. So yeah, our first right. question is, what inspired you to write your book, Sandy? Um, okay, so I've always wanted to write a children's book, ever, actually ever since I was a little girl. And I still remember sitting in the classroom and the teacher standing there with the big book and, and flipping the pages, like Little House of the Prairie books and stuff. And, and it was just that connection. And, and you, like, you look at all the other little kids sitting around you and, and you actually felt like you were the one on the prairie. <laughs> and I thought, I want to, I want to write a children's book, but you know what, as I got older, um, I just, I, I still wanted to do it, but the content had not come to me yet because in the content I wanted it to inspire um, children and I wanted them to have that emotional connection like I did when I was little but it never ever came to me and then all of a sudden back in May I remember talking to my husband and I said I I want to write that children's book and he goes what are you going to write it on and I said I have no idea but it'll come to me. I know it will. <laughs> and I said, I, my, my whole intention is to be able to um, really help the kids right now. Cause um, like we have six grandkids and I see what they're going through with everything that's been going on in the world. And you listen to them, you listen to how like they're, they're just, they're drained. Like their self images are starting to get drained. And um, because as adults, we don't put ourselves into those little children's position and like they're, they're losing their playfulness, they're losing their joy, they're losing their imaginations and their beliefs about themselves. So I thought, that's it. That is it. And then he goes, okay, so get writing. And I started writing and Pashmina, it was like somebody had taken over my hand. And I don't do everything on the computer. I'm not that great in the computer. I'm getting better. <laughs> but everything I write is by hand. So once my pen hit the paper, it was like somebody else had the guide of my hand. And it was, it was just unreal. And on my, on my hand was cramping because it was happening so fast like my hand could not keep up with my brain and my brain was telling me you got to write this write this write this and then I started going deeper into my inner child and what I went through um, with my self-image and that's what the book is about is our self-image and our beliefs about ourselves. and afterwards um actually during it my husband was asking me questions and I had to keep telling him wait 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 and so he just sat back and just let me do it and after it was done he goes that was powerful he goes it was like you're in a trance and I said I know I said I had no control it was just like it was happening so fast that it was it was like my gift had opened up because I believe that everybody has a gift and that was just like, it had opened up and said, okay, this is the content. This is your passion and you need to, you need to spread this. And so of course, after I read it, I was just about crying to myself because it was like, it was therapy for myself. And when I read it to him, I could not even get through it. I was crying so hard. And then he started crying and he goes, this is your life. This is about what you went through. And you, he goes, you know, you held this inside until only about, I would say six months ago. And it was about looking in the mirror and loving who that reflection was. And it, because it had taken me my whole life to be able to stand in the mirror and, and be happy with my reflection. 
So yeah, that was just, and I thought, okay, that's it. I have to share it. And then the next one, the, like the second book that is in the Believe book actually came right afterwards. And it only took me like maybe a half an hour to write. That's yeah. an incredible story of inspiration. Um, and like how you, I love how you said that it's, you know, for your grandkids, I mean, it's your own personal story of self-image, but you see that you're in within like the situation with children at the moment that they're all broken and <clears throat> they can't find themselves and their reflections are all over the place. So you yeah. mentioned like it's, it's for your grandkids age. So what age group is your book actually for? I mean, it's touching me as an adult <laughs> already. Um, well, I could read it too. Uh, yeah, it, I would say it's actually like ages, like say six, um, because you, they can read then. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say six to 13. But you know what? Um, those are those that the age about the mirror because it's more of a, a playful cartoon book. Mm -hmm. But if an adult was to read that book to their child, it would actually bring out that inner child of them and make them reflect on their beliefs in themselves. And where did the like where did those beliefs come from? And do I still allow those beliefs to control me? Mm, beautiful. So it's yeah. a message, it's a universal as well as, you know, a universal message for children and adults all over the world about having great reflections and inner conversations with ourselves. So this book is a teaching tool. Um, so in the classroom, if this book was to be used in the classroom, how and why do the themes pertain to like in an education system? We, we talked a little bit about reflection, but what else would it bring to a classroom? So what I have done with, of course, your team um, together, we have created like the beautiful, beautiful book. Um, and then also we're going to be doing an um, activity book along with it. Because when you put the knowledge and the information that we gather out of the book, that that helps trigger the feelings, but it it's a more impact when you actually do it yourselves and then you're putting yourself in that book just like I did with like when I was a little girl so you actually get to be able to connect those feelings with that and by the activity book the, it's it's going to be so much fun because they're going to be experiencing that themselves by writing and and coloring the mirrors themselves and expressing their feelings how they feel about themselves and um I, yeah, I just, I just think it's just a positive, it's so positive. And with the, with the classrooms, um, my intention and my, my goal is to be able to do Zoom calls with some of these children in the classrooms, because being the author, I'm so excited to share it. And I'm so excited to listen to what other children have to say and just watch their growth themselves. Mm -hmm. And because I know how much I grew and, um, and it just, I want to be able to have that, like have that connection with them. So if I could be on Zoom calls while the kids are doing them, and then they can ask me questions. Um, yeah, just, it, it just, it puts, it puts that connection with me, with the children, right? That's beautiful. And like, I love that idea of the activity book, because you're actually allowing them to engage in what the characters of the book went through. And this is really great role play and imagination in the classroom. Which brings yeah. us to the next question. It's, this is a beautiful message that you're putting out there. How do you want it to be seen on a global scale? You know, I would actually, I would love to see it be taught in school systems. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that right now, um, our children need this. Mm -hmm. And it's like just for an awakening of them. And because they don't understand living in awareness means they're too young they don't understand awakening of the inner child as adults i think that's so important for us to be able to realize that our words and our actions are so important they are the foundation of our children and we don't realize that we're either going to be putting them in a negative 
vibration or a positive vibration. And we're forming them as young adults. Yeah. And those will carry on for the rest of their lives. Exactly. And that, oh, wow. And that is universal and global because all children are basically the same. They start off the same with like a blank canvas, um, yes. no matter where they're from. Uh, you know, it just, and you're so right. It's like as adults, we like, you know, put paint on that canvas. And we should make sure that those are the right words and the right thoughts to be able to create the painting of their lives, which is successful and happy and showing exactly what you said, which is growth. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So you told us like you channeled, this happened when you channeled. So, you, you, you know, we know now that your themes in your books and the characters are universal. So, you know, that's yeah. wonderful, wonderful marketing tool as well that I mean, even us crossing continent bridges and talking Canada and Thailand you're already inspiring me which makes me with my big red mouth go out there and tell everybody <laughs> <laughs> so, but the, the, you told us about this channeling and you know and this you 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 wrote it and it you know it came through you did you realize at that point that it needed to be published no, at that, um, I, I, I knew and I felt that, that there was a message in there for my book, mm -hmm. but um, when, I, when I finished it, I thought, okay, this is what the kids need, mm -hmm. but when I read it out loud, I, not to myself, but when I read it out loud, it, that really hit me. That is when it really opened up my awareness and going, wow, this is me. This little girl that I was writing about, and now it's whether it's a girl or a boy, this is about them. This is, this is um, like, like I share my story. I share like where my, my backstory came from, <coughs> excuse me, but um, this is just, this is a message for everybody else. I'm only a messenger. And that's how I felt afterwards is that this is, yeah, this is my story, but you can't live my story, but I can give you the tools in the toolbox to be able to create your own new story. And that's what we have to do. If we don't, if we do not um, like standing in front of the mirror, which that was probably one of my life struggles is standing in front of the mirror and loving that reflection that I see. So I wanted through my story and through them, I want them to see that this is my story I wrote, but this is them inside. That's wonderful. That is so yeah. remarkably beautiful. And, and wow, I, I mean, I can't wait to hold this book in my hands as well and read it for myself. <clears throat> and I mean, I have two older children, but I'm sure that they would understand like where the concepts of this are coming from too, which is beautiful. Um, so what is your main reflection on your journey as an author? Um, my reflection is to remember that um, we have to focus that this is our journey. This is not somebody else's journey to tell us how to act, how to dress, how to talk. Um, we teach our children, like when they're little, how to talk, but we need to let them grow. We need to let them make mistakes because that's not a growth, but we also have to be there to nourish them. We also have to be there to like to encourage them on letting them be whoever they want to be. That is one thing. We have two daughters, one's 39 and one's 40. And we that's one thing we've always told them is don't be like us. Be your own person. We will be proud of you no matter what. And we will be there when you fall to pick you back up. And we will be there on your triumphs. But this is your journey. And you have to look in the mirror and love who you are. And and it just that that's that's mainly what I wanted like the message I wanted to get across and like another thing to do is we're we have to stop um thinking that we know what other people are thinking about us mm. because I and that that is something that um I think would really hurt me when I stood in front of the mirror 
is that I was always looking at myself and I the goal and I seen what other people were seeing and telling me like you're too big you need to lose weight you're this you're that and that's what I seen right and that instead of seeing myself and that was my growth once I realized that it doesn't matter what they say it matters inside because if I love myself inside and radiate that's going to show outside wow beautiful so yes. wonderful and do you have any more books in the pipeline that continue this this message and this brand and this education that you're bringing to us on a global scale yeah so um in the book believe i also have the other section of it um about a little boy named danny which is santa's friend like a little girl the character because there's really four main characters in this book that each of the mirrors are a character so and the Santa is a character and Danny is a character. So what I've wanted to do is I wanted to incorporate them all um, and they all have a purpose. So when Santa is happy, the mirror is glowing. When Santa goes into her state that she is um, like uh, doesn't believe in herself anymore. Her self image is low. Self esteem is low. Then the mirror goes dark. And um, and then she meets up with Danny, but Danny is doing his own journey of self doubt, but his is the but what if stage. Mm -hmm. So I wanted that, that to um, help people and help children to stop always thinking about what if that happens, what if that happens, but what if it doesn't, what if the good happens. So there's always a positive with the negative and we have to focus more on the positive. And then the, so those are the two that are joined together. And then the other one that I've just finished is my Christmas, Santa's Christmas book. And I also have, I, I, I have an activity book um, that I'm working on right now to go along with it. Because like I said earlier, Pashmina, it's just when you combine your um like the just the knowledge and and the experience but with with the writing it changes it changes you because you have that emotional connection and yeah so just because I never had Christmas growing up and it just it's my story again but it's the story of the feeling of Christmas and it brings the adults also back to what the feeling of Christmas was when they were that inner child and to let them the inner child get out there and play and laugh and because we forget as adults right yeah so yeah our editor loves Christmas so she's going to be really happy to receive <laughs> she's already talking about Christmas and it's like <laughs> August or September so that's wonderful so you have something lined up for that which is great so it yeah. is it's, believe is part of the series and and it's if you have a workbook and coming out, which we're so excited to see in tandem with that, plus your Christmas book and maybe some other books in this series. And before yeah. we go, there's two things that I would like to ask for you. So what is one inspiring message you would like to leave for your audience? And where can they find you at the moment through your email? So if they have any questions, they can email you directly. Okay. So the message that my most important message is to um, get comfortable in the mirror and believe in yourself and not worry about what other people think of you. Um, still be kind, like be, be very, very thoughtful of other people's feelings, but um, mostly just believe in yourself because, you know, we all, like I said earlier, we all have a gift and we all have a purpose. And don't let anybody else steal your purpose. Don't steal a child's purpose. Don't let, don't let, don't you steal somebody else's joy. Like don't allow somebody else to steal that children's joy. Um, our children need us right now. And um, yeah, so you can, if, you, if anybody wants to get a hold of me, they can get a hold of me at sandy.forsell. And that's F as in Frank, O-R-S-E-I-L-L-E -L -L -E at gmail.com. That's wonderful, Sandy. Thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you so much from everyone at the OAO for joining us today. And thank you for making us believe again. Mm -hmm.